everybody. Welcome back. It's another episode. D- double guns there, Shane. Like, coming out slinging. Yep. I'm, I'm your co-host, Chris Angel. This is Shane McGraw, your host. And we are uh, slinging. Gunslinging. Gunslinger. <laughs> finger, finger gunslinging. I think I could have been, a, I could have good, been a good cowboy, Chris. Oh, yes, or Shooter McGavin, maybe. Like, you would uh, be a... Huge butt, which would have helped me ride horses. <laughs> yep. That's amazing. I didn't know that about you, actually, because I always get to see your face. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so thank you for that. I feel much more informed now. Yeah, I'm here to serve the. the I, feel like I, know, I feel like I know you so much more now. There is a standing joke, and I would, I'd be bold enough to say, um, a precedence that's been established hmm. about the quality of my calves. My calves. Hmm. I have the best calves in all the land, Chris. Hmm. Wow. Yep. That's fantastic. I wear shorts with caution because it really messes with people. <laughs> cause, you cause people to stumble as you walk yeah. down the street. You're like, you're like can't take their eyes off your caps. But let's I want to play a game with my audience. If, if you see me and you get to see my calves, I want you to know that you're welcome to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing, which is great because if I look at my calves, I have bird legs, like so mm-hmm. my bird ankles, bird calves, like it's very hard to develop my calves. And so, um, you know, if I were taking a calf All assessment, calves like me, Chris. I know. I mean, there's certain limits, uh, genetic um, uh, limitations, deficiencies, deficiencies. Yeah. deficiencies. <laughs> right. But if I took an assessment on calves, then I would be, I would, I would feel uh, inadequate uh, if I were comparing my assessment to your assessment. I'm, I'm thinking yes. But you can't compare your insides to other people's outsides. They say so. True. When you when you assess yourself, you need to assess yourself against your own best self and not Shane's calves. So what do you want to do with that? If we could say the word Shane's calves 32 times. <laughs> that is today's word game. Shane calves. Shane's calves. Okay, so I wanted to talk about, Chris, um, I've been like, I'm just, I'm totally going to fumble through this because I don't know if you know, but I don't think most, and here's my argument. I don't believe that most artists know what they're drawing when they start putting brush to canvas. Ooh, that's true. I agree with that. I don't think they know. I think that they, their soul, mm. however you want to say it, mm. I think that they start to, mm-hmm. it starts to take its shape based yeah. on the tapestry and based on the available colors and based on the mood of the artist, yeah. and, you know, the time of the day and what the last imp- inspirational quote they heard, like the, the art is a sum of many things that's mm. going on in their in the hog. And I have a friend named Richard. And if you're listening to this, Richard, I hope you, you, uh, I, I keep telling you my, I'm your number one fan. I don't think you believe me. <laughs> uh, what he'll do is he'll be in an environment he'll be waiting at the ferry he'll be on a lunch break he'll be camping and he's this amazing sketch artist and what he'll do is he'll just sit on a picnic table and he'll paint everything that he can see in his pretty hmm. so he'll paint his rv hooked to his truck with a fire and trees in the background and he's just wow. i freaking love it i love it i always i always just feel like he has such a blessing of seeing the simplicity of life and having it fulfill him because he's able to turn it into something. And so today I want to talk about you being the artist, the audience, mm-hmm. and the tapestry being this life. Mm. And what you, you know, where you start will likely not be where you finish, right? Like you can't dictate the outcome of your, your art. But I think that you can, the closer you get to understanding um, some of the secrets of being a good artist, mm the more fun you'll have creating art mm. in your journey. I don't know if the symbolism is following there, if I'm drawing a good parallel between life and art, but- um, I get it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Okay. Um, so I um, was part of this coaching company and at the end of every one of our coaching things, once a year, they had the back five or six pages of this book had a bunch of questions. And the concept was, is, you know, do, is your car clean at all times? And I'm like, no. And he would say, if it's a yes or it's a no, it's not a maybe. So you would mm. circle it. And then you would add up all these things at the end and it would give you like a score. And then that score would have, if you're from this range to this range, here's where you're at. If you're from this range to this range, here's where you're at. And he'd always have three tiers. Mm-hmm. And the bottom would say, you suck, fix it. <laughs> and the middle would say, eh, you know, you're playing the game. I'd step it up, you know, you're not a loss, you know, you're not complete crap, but you probably need to pick it up. And then yeah. the top would say, sustain this, you're doing well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Keep doing it. 
and I would take this test every year for six years. And it was a series of dumb things like, have you watched this movie? Have you, you know, went to this leadership training course? Have you um, yeah. read this book? Hmm. And the truth be told, if I were to look at all my six years, the thing that I think maybe impacted me the most was taking that quantitative test being forthright, it's either a yes or a no once a year and finding out if I was doing better or worse. Hmm. And there was years when I would sit there and I would take the test and I would know before I started that I didn't do very good hmm. or I didn't do it. I didn't meet the standards that I had chose, hmm. but it was never like I failed. It was just, it was just clarity. It was just recalibrating of something that's important to me and recognizing that, you know, like one of the things he used to write is your closet must be clean. Hmm. And I would think that that's probably more of a bias for him that he realized that if his car was clean, his closet was clean. Those are some things in his life that dictate that kind of were good examples of some other things in his life. Right. I don't know about you, but when I change my clothes, I drop them where I'm standing and I get in my bed. <laughs> I don't have to process <laughs> where I'm at. Yeah. And he's encouraged me to have more intentionality, but I've never really won that area. Mm -hmm. But I did win the car area. And now people will get in my car and go, oh, you have a bottle on your floor. They'll make fun of me because I always have a clean car. Mm. I don't do that because I think it's something that makes me a better person, but it's an example of my commitment to caring for the vehicle that I drive and being in a clean environment. Mm. It's just something I do. So this test became something that I looked forward to mm. every year or I didn't. Mm. And I always kind of wish that he would ask more questions. And I wish the questions he would ask would be more about, you know, I wanted to know how I was doing in like my marriage. Yeah. I want to know how I was doing in my family. I want to know how I was doing with my, he was a business coach. So he would teach me how to do business and how to make money and then how to save it. Mm -hmm. So he would say, this is how you go get some business. This is how you build a team to cater to that business. And then this is how you run your business and count the money. That's what he did. And so every single time he would stick to those areas. And I always wished that he would give me clarity mm -hmm. on how to be a good husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are some things that I can work on that might compound it over time, help me be a better husband, help me be more fit. And he gave me little nuggets, but he never quizzed me. Mm. So um, I um, realized that if I find a hole in something that maybe it's my responsibility to fix it. So I set on this, this path over the last three years of making a quiz for myself that I would take randomly and I built a little Excel spreadsheet and I'd go plug it all in and I'd ask myself my retirement numbers and I have this big old robust spreadsheet that I made that I'm kind of converting into the thing that I can give to other people. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is, is each of these pages of the spreadsheet represented different departments of my life that I wanted to measure from time to time mm -hmm. just to see how I was doing so that I could have recalibration of doing the things I know will lead to places I want to be. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So doing the things yeah. that you know will lead to the places you want to be because we are the sum of our disciplines, of our daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly habits. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have a method of measurement, mm -hmm. how are we really going to know if we're making the headway that we desire to make? Is there a yeah. way to deliver a quiz where you don't fail and you don't pass? You just validate your efforts mm -hmm. and recalibrate your next effort, set up your next season so that you can make sure that you're trajectory is going where you want it to go yeah i love it is there I, such a thing is there such a quiz i've created one um i don't know that it'll ever be done because you're learning right yeah but i've come up with a thing where um it's 130 questions chris i love it but basically they're very quick it's like do you like in the marriage one it says do you date your wife once a week mm -hmm. yes or no yes or no well if it's every other week it's a no if mm -hmm. it's well, I most of the time do it. I mean, I would say three weeks out of the four I do it. It's a no, because mm -hmm. it's not about can you mold it to fit you. It's if you date your wife 52 times a year, <laughs> I think that you will have made the investment of commitment. What do you think your wife wants from you? If you really paid attention, she wants you to be present. Mm -hmm. She wants you to be committed. She wants you to be consistent. She wants you to put her first. Mm -hmm. She wants you to listen. She wants mm. you to be dependable. She wants you to um, have a plan. Mm. She mm -hmm. wants you to set the example, right? Yep. 
Yeah. So every once a week, I told myself I wasn't. Maybe I might not be the best husband the other times of the week. Well, but once a week, I'm going to do those things. <laughs> and I'm going to do them in the form of a date. I'm going to pick her up and I'm going to drop her off and I'm going to take my girlfriend on a date. Once a week, she's my girlfriend and I'm earning the right for her to be here next week. Nice. nice. I don't think that my marriage would be poor in five years. Do you? No. Nope. I'm not sure I've ever had a guy go, yeah, you know, <laughs> and the crux of my marriage is I dated my wife too much. <laughs> right. I put her yeah. first too often. Yeah. I was too consistent for her. Right. No. Yeah. Powerful. So I have these seven pillars that we've created and um, I have a website for every one of them now. And then every time I do a blog, every time I do a thing like this, um, I post it on cadreconcept.com and you go there and you could, you could go cadreconcept.com backslash fitness, back, mm. backslash, back, back. Yeah. Is, backslash. Backslash. I think we just say slash now because everybody knows it's backslash, but yeah, slash. Okay, so you know I'm not taking cool like you just. Oh well, I, I miss. I, I might be wrong. I just, I stopped using the back. I just you know say what? slash. I want to bring sexy back. <laughs> yes. There's a reason why I don't can have you, a friends, Chris. Can, can you get that on uh, kadriconcept.com slash bringing sexy back? No, I think I can do whatever I want. I'm, that should be a hidden page awesome. on your site. It's not so very... I created a formula that has about seven layers and we're building a presentation right now where we're trying to map out each one. And I have this great opportunity where my kids go to this private school and I've been building this test and refining it and refining it and refining it. And I've had about 150 people take it and hmm. um, they seem to really like it, but I, it doesn't seem to have a lot of stickiness. They're like, Oh, that's cool. And then they move on. So hmm. now we're, we're creating an email. When you take the test, you'll get a, a, you know, an implementation email once a week. Hmm. So it'll be like, hey, this is how you can implement something on this. And here's some context and some thoughts around it. Hmm. And then we're putting out videos and we're going to start making it to where if you choose to tune in, you'll have stuff to consume. Hmm. Um, we're going to interview other people. We're going to, you know, whatever we can do to give you tools in these seven pillars, because we believe these things right here. Hmm. If everybody in our little cadre concept community was trying to do it, it would create like a, not a competition. That's not the goal. It would create a collaborative uh, way for all of us to be striving towards the best life we can live in an abundant yeah. way. Um, and that abundant life would open the doors mm. for communication and collaboration and celebrations of a common language. Like one of the things I always say is hashtag date your girlfriend, mm. hashtag date your girlfriend, date your daughter. So I have daddy daughter dates. I would love it if every man I know copied that. Because mm. I don't see how that doesn't help the world be better. Yeah. Yeah. Take your daughter in a way that she holds the, the man who would ask her out to the same standard that she held you, that you taught her to hold herself to. Mm. That you, the precedence that you set, being on time, being present, being consistent. You know, like for instance, I was dating my wife a lot and one day, she, and my daughter a lot. And one day she was like, I'm just going to wait for daddy because he'll get me my nails done. And she started having this little <laughs> attitude. And I was thinking, well, that's not what the woman I want her to be. Mm. I don't want her to think that date is all about her. Hmm. So I said, Maddie, you're going to plan the next date. And your job is to date me. Hmm. I'll do the drive and I'll be the dad. I'll pay. But your job is to come up with something that we will both enjoy, but you were going to pick it for me. Hmm. And it was great for us. Hmm. That's cool. It really was. That's cool. I like that. So here's where I'm going with this, this test, I believe, and I'm going to try to really hard to focus on this test for the rest of this podcast, because I have a goal. My goal is that every single set of ears that hears this podcast, mm. no matter how you hear it, that you'll say, I can carve out 20 to 25 minutes to go into um, this test, take it and give myself some clarity about where I'm at in these areas and what I can work on to make it better. So that next time I take the test, I feel like I'm turning my, my seven into an eight, mm. my eight into a nine. It's not about perfection. It's about getting better all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so fired up. I can't even breathe about it. I just love it. And then I've been building this big spreadsheet. And my goal is, is at some point to be able to say, hey, guys, here's a formula that we can all do together. Mm -hmm. We have this system. Now let's quantify it. So there's some kind of measurement stick where you can measure it yourself 
and I want to talk about finances and how you can make deposits in that bank account. I want to talk about marriage. You can make deposits in that account. Fitness, like, um, hold on, let me recalibrate because I feel like I'm meandering. I don't like that. <laughs> it's so important to just talk off the cuff. Sometimes when I'm making these podcasts, one of the things that I want to calibrate for myself is I want to talk as if I'm talking to one person and not broadcasting as if I have something that mm. I feel like I have to be heard on. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to one person and I want my audience to be, can I make a difference? Can I encourage the, the best part of something yeah. from someone for one person? And then if that person receives the, something they can use and they implement it, and it creates a gravitational pull, like we were talking about in the last podcast. Um, when you when you focus on something, you start to talk about something. You start to, you know, if you're into chess, there's clubs that play chess. If you're into biking, there's bikes. You know, we all have we've created these little groups around anything and everything that you want to get into in this world. And the, the technology that has been made available to us is I can I can learn about anything and do community about anything with people from all over the world at any given time that I choose. Mm -hmm. I think we right now, it's not so much that we have so much information that makes us successful. It's we have the, the ability to connect with people without barriers that makes us makes our opportunities become available. And I, I figured if I could take a bunch of people and create a community around living an abundant, fulfilling, missional life, mm -hmm. where it's not so much where you're going, but the character of which you have inside of you that you're using to go there and the fact that you're where we're united is is that you know that there's wisdom and there's value in going with other people on that journey hmm. and i think to, if i was talking to my buddy chris angel who i've never met in person but i i've grown to really respect i would want to be able to connect with him on a reoccurring level and hear the victories of his journey and hear the character development that he's on because I know that those things will lead to more good things for Chris. And if Chris has a hole in his pillars, meaning he's got a great family, he's got great fitness, he's got everything is lined, but his finances are crap. Well, I want him to pull from this community um, confidence, you know, and purpose. You know, on the last podcast, we talked about this idea of having purpose mm -hmm. that would lead to pace, and then that pace would lead to clarity. And that clarity would lead to the courage and humility to implement and to stay on the course, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're really good at a lot of these areas, but then you're not good at your fitness area, mm -hmm. what a great opportunity to plug into a community of people who um, are coming from a place of abundance and they're just sharing and they're helping. Um, so I want to tell a little story because I think the, the cadre concept is a series of stories molding together with other people to create a better story. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the better story is the story where all people get the chance to grow, not one. Mm -hmm. Every environment that I've ever been in, whether there's one person that's elevated and the rest are not elevated, it's not sustainable because it's not the way we're wired. We're supposed to go on journey together. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's supposed to be some people to flip burgers and there's supposed to be some people to own the burger joint. That's okay. It's, it's the journey. You could, be, you could be the best father. You could be healthy, wealthy, and wise in every way and flip burgers. Mm. It's not what you do, it's who you are while doing it. Mm. So mm -hmm. if you're gonna put some parentheses or underline or circle some notes, it's not what you do, it's who you are while doing it. Therefore, the cadre concept, the doors are open for anybody to come and play. It doesn't matter what you do or where you're at in your life, today could be the day that you join a community that says we're for you, mm. we're for people, mm -hmm. equity, we're for collaboration, we're for there's plenty of information I'm free to share to you and you're free to receive it. If you need something, call me and I'll take time out of my day to give it because there's enough opportunity. There's enough fruit on this apple tree for all of us to have the fruit. Mm. But if I hoard it, I'm going to waste a good percentage of that fruit because I can only have so much and use it wisely. So it's actually not responsible for me to, to plant a fruit tree without the idea that I would share that fruit. Does that make sense? Yeah. The prison that we talk about on a regular basis that I always am like trying to be cognizant of where in my life am I, do I have a, a hole that's creating a prison where I could have freedom from that? 
mm-hmm. you know, a shame or a guilt or a loneliness or a sadness or, mm-hmm. you know, fear or pride. And there's these, some of these emotions that we allow to be our best friend in some per- perspectives. Mm-hmm. And then in other areas, they, they stifle and they suck the life out of us and they hurt us. And sometimes all you need is a little pat on the butt and some encouragement to, 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 to see something for what it is and make a change inside yeah. of yourself yeah. or inside of the decisions you make that'll lead you to the best version of yourself in that area. And I've really, I've really wrestled with this idea of how could I deliver a quiz or a test, something that's not necessarily the thing, but it's yeah. a thing. It's not something new, but something improved on something that's encouraging and uplifting that allows people, everybody to meet in one spot and get better. Um, so then I, I stumbled upon this thought process and this is where I kind of want to go with the rest of this podcast is um, my kids go to a private school in the area and it's this little rinky dink private school. And, you know, I think he has like, you know, 10 or 12 kids in his class. And, um, you know, for the truth be told, I felt like it was a deposit in the bank account to put my kids in a school where they would get more good than, than, bad you know they'd have smaller class sizes they would have you know um my son is one of 300 Mm -hmm. so every teacher knows him Mm -hmm. and his first grade teacher is in the cubicle next to a second grade teacher and they can talk and work together on how to lead my son Mm -hmm. and i can have relationships with them because most of those teachers are in my community they go to my church or they you know i've helped them buy houses and i can influence them but i've never thought that it was a place that i'm supposed to have a mission in I thought it was a place I was supposed to drop my kid off for him to be taught. Hmm. And then it kind of dawned on me that if this cadre concept was ever going to work, I almost need to make it for the kids. Hmm. I need to make it for that, that 17, 18 year old person who's like, my school has this concept where they are scholastically focused. So if you go to that school, you'll go to college. And I'm not saying that I don't like college, but I'm just saying that's not my goal with my kids. Hmm. My goal is that they'll, they'll find their purpose early and it'll give them a pace, it'll give them clarity, and it'll give them courage and humility to do the world mm. to their terms, and not to become a highly skilled worker, but to become a highly impactful person in the world mm. and recognize that they don't, they don't work to make money, they work to help a mission move forward and they get to receive some pay in the journey. I want them to have purpose. So I started thinking, man, I wonder if I could dumb down this quiz to where it catered to a kid. Like I can't ask him if he's dating his wife, right. but I can ask him if he's surrendering to his mother and helping her out. Does he carry the groceries for his mom? Mm-hmm. Does he open the door? Mm-hmm. These are little teeny pieces of measurement for a character development of a young man mm-hmm. to see if he understands that his role is to right now as a teenager is to serve the family that's providing for him and to be on time for dinner, to have a positive attitude to, to you know, to show up and care about those who are doing for him mm-hmm. while he's getting the opportunity to, to not have to re- have the responsibility of caring for himself. He gets to experience life instead of earn it. That's cool. And he gets that because I'm his father and I work hard for him. Right. Well, I would love it if he would learn, if he would spend time in this season of his life, learning the character that will help him in the next season of his life. Mm-hmm. When he has a boss and he serves that boss, like he serves his father. He, he thinks of what his father needs before he does it. You know, hey, dad, I saw that you were thirsty, so I brought you a glass while you were mowing the lawn. You know, I don't ask my son to mow the lawn when I'm mowing it because I like to mow it. But the fact that he would know that I was working hard for him and receive that mm. would mean just as much to me as if he took the mower from me. Right. right? Yeah. You know, what if he did that to his boss? And he said, boss, I noticed you've been running hard. Here's some water. Mm. I think as a boss, me having lots of people on my team, Sometimes I wish they would just reckon, they would come to me and say, Hey, thank you for all that you do. Mm-hmm. By the way, I saw when you did that, and that means a lot to me because I do a lot for them. Right. Um, and they do this. What's in it for me? Instead of saying, Man, I, I could provide more value to this guy than just showing up. Mm. So I created this quiz and I'm creating a kid version of it. And I'm going to present it to my kids' school. And I'm hoping mm-hmm. that I can get it kind of integrated, you know, into the school where the school will have a, a part of their identity will be like, we give our kids purpose and we get them into college, but we get them, we get them into college with some foundational components inside of their, you know, tool bag to yeah. go with them when they go to college. So they don't go to college and fall off a cliff. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest problems we notice in the Christian schools is that we shelter our kids 
we put them in these little bubbles and we say, you know, avoid the sinners, if you will, and avoid the bad behaviors because it'll protect you. But then when they go to college, they end up going the opposite direction because they didn't get a chance to choose mm-hmm. to have the roots. Mm-hmm. That the roots aren't very deep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been praying and thinking about the idea of how do I create a test? Well, I've created it. And not only did I create it, and when I say I, I mean we created it. There's collaborative of people who've been helping me by no means. In fact, I'm not even the center of it at all. I just started an idea that took fire and other people made it way better than I could have. But we've created this test. It's 130 questions. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to get every single person that we can to go take this free quiz. And this free quiz will lead you through a series of questions and then it'll roll into a module that's a goal setting module where you could say, okay, what are two things in each of these areas that I can improve upon and how can I break them down into practical, Hmm. implementable things today so that when I take this quiz again, I can see if I've made the headway I want. And we have one for the him and one for the her, if you will. And then we have a marriage one where you guys can do it together. Hmm. And the idea would be is you need to be independently heading in your direction. Hmm. Your wife needs to be independently heading in her direction. And then as a team, you create a, what do we want to accomplish together? And this goal setting module does both of those things. Hmm. Cool. And my goal is, is to get so many people to take the quiz and to like start the journey of having you know, a level of abundance that when I invite them in November, I'm really praying about having a conference called the best year ever conference. Hmm. And the idea is what would it look like if you got together with you and your wife or by yourself and you spent three days engineering the next year, not doing a, you know, a new year's resolution, not none of that crap, but actually putting into practice some practical things that you can do tools that you can apply and a community to help support you as you do it. Um, I want to put on an event. Um, I, I don't know how I'm going to pay for it. I don't know how I'm going to invite people. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I just feel like if I could do that twice a year hmm. where people could tune into this test regularly as a overarching, um, opportunity to have the, to, to question, to, to, like Andy Andrew said, go out into the world with a question, am I a good husband? And then find out if you are, am yeah. I good with my money and find out if you are. And then if I'm not, find out what the tweaks I can do to where next year I can be good. Mm. And what I found is if you look at your seven pillars of purpose, Mm. there's always one or two. If you look at them from in a circle, there's always a flat spot in your tire. Mm. Every one of us, we have great everything, but we're overweight and we we, we could do better there. So we know that if we can make some small changes here, that it'll impact all these two. And then next year we have another thing that's a flat spot. We just, it's not about being perfect. It's about being on a journey of surrendering, having the courage and the humility to do the work, to stay within your purpose. Mm. Um, I don't don't know if that was articulated well or if it sold something, but my goal is is that everybody would stop listening and start doing, (laughs) and then they would listen to affirm what they're doing. Yeah. Instead of the other way around. I think we consume information as a people group, but we don't do anything with it. Right. Or don't, we don't do enough. And I don't think the temperature of those things enough. That's what I love about your quiz. I feel like to have uh, a check-in moment twice a year. I love also that it's not a one-time thing, that twice a year you could be, or more often, but once a quarter, whatever, twice a year you're checking in on and getting reflection back on how you're doing in the life you say you want to live. You know, I think that's, that's the gift for sure. Yeah, and I, I'd like to see like, you know, if you can get a kid to take it and a mom to take it and a dad to t- take it, hmm. you can have the father and son working at, you know, helping him, the son grow his character and the mom and the son helping to grow the character, the yeah. son and the dad helping the son can help. My son's wise. Mm. You know, he's got things to say that I need to hear. I That's mean, cool. you want to ever want to look in the mirror and find out how you're doing? Talk to your kids and they'll tell you the truth. They'll <laughs> tell you what you're doing wrong. You just got to listen. Mm. Like the other day, my son was mocking me. He's like, hello, hello, hold on. I got to take another call. Hello, hello. <laughs> he's like mocking me. And just doing all these things. And I was like, man, he's probably telling me some truths here. Oh, man. Wow. So Good. Chris, how do I, give me some magic sauce. You're, you're a marketer. You help people uh, you inspire others to, to take action, to do something. I am trying desperately to have enough momentum between now and October. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To where I could say, Hey guys, I'm going to foot the bill for a big conference. 
I want to charge you 50 bucks to come or something and we'll give you some food and um, we'll, 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 we'll introduce you to some people that can speak into your life in these areas mm. and we'll all leave with this, a unified approach and a workbook to use. Mm. How do I do that? How do I take that vision and make it real using the podcast medium? Yeah, you're, you're doing it right now. And everybody listening to this, I mean, the, the whole thing about content is it creates relationships. So ultimately, um, your, you, the people listening, you listening to this, your ability to get super honest about where you are in your life. Like we all have dreams. We all have desires. You have a life that you painted for yourself when you took the, the road you're on. And you're most likely not where you want to be. And the reason is because in these seven areas of life, you have holes, gaping holes that you're just not being honest about. Mm. we pretend everything's okay. We pretend we're like, oh, well, we'll figure it out tomorrow. And there's no urgency. And we just keep nursing these gaping holes along and we don't have to actually make change. And, and it's, it's the funny thing about getting really honest about your life and what's not working is that that pain creates massive change. As long as you're focused on the, you know, everything's great and Focus on the the things that are going well. That's fine, but we don't move away from. Ple- we don't we don't move because of pleasure. We mostly move because of pain. And until you get really honest about the pain you have, you're just going to keep settling for. Or to to use the word from our last episode, you're going to keep um, serving time in your current reality. And most of us don't want the current reality. We want something bigger. We want to keep expanding. So your quiz, Shane, to me, your quiz does that. Your quiz is a very honest reflection of where you're stuck and why you're stuck and what change you may need to make to get to the life you actually dreamed of. Uh, I just, um, I think one of the things that I um, get caught up in doing that I think makes me unique is that I could easily close my eyes and look into the future and try to visualize what it would look like to have a community of people around me that are, um, speaking life into me. Mm. Um, and I think the best way I want to tell a little mini story that I think we should call this a, a, a podcast and, you know, call me, text me, email me, respond, quote, what, you know, whatever you need to do and, and then like engage this. Mm. Uh, the first step to take an action is doing something and engaging something or someone, right? So, man, I have missed like 30 calls. I must either have a lot of debts due. <laughs> uh I want to tell you a little story about something I'm doing. It's not, I don't have a punchline here. It's just a little, little thing I'm learning is my wife um, is amazing at being disciplined with what she eats. Mm. Uh, 15 years ago when we got married, we didn't know anything about life um, at all, or especially me. I was a complete idiot, but um, we did make some commitments that had some foresight in them. And one of the things that we made to my wife's um, credit was she wanted to live a marriage that had healthiness in it. And she didn't want that because she felt like she had it as an upbringing. She wanted that because she felt like it was something that she wanted to take from her upbringing and make it a strength of her own. Like mm-hmm. it's something that became important to her based on, you know, health and stuff of her family. And um, she made me commit to that too. And, you know, I, I, I committed to it kind of blindly without really understanding what I was committing to. Mm-hmm. As I've gotten older, you know, such as marriage, right? You, you do your best and then you're like, what did I do here? <laughs> and, yeah. But over the years, I have had a story on my health where I'm naturally a pretty, I got a decent physique. I'm naturally pretty big. My whole bloodline, you know, all the men in my life kind of are big, strong guys. Mm. We got big bones and nice sexy, calves. super sexy calves. <laughs> um, yeah. you, you owe it to yourself to get a little calf in your life. Um, and with all that, like, uh, kind of programming. I've never really been a six pack guy. Even when I was like super skinny, I didn't have a six pack. I've always just kind of had this big one pack, not a fat pack, but just, I'm just not wired like a little skinny person. You know, we, there's different body types in this world. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've always just been a big one. Even when I got into the basic training, they're like, yeah, you're kind of in a spot in the military where based on your height and your age, you should weigh this, but your body's not that kind. So I always was on the fat kid program, even when I was lean, because my body just wasn't the right dynamics, at least according to the military. Um, and so my wife would always encourage me. She broke me from a lot of bad habits. She you know, replaced my whole milk with almond milk over time. Hmm. And she replaced my you know, carbs with vegetables. And she replaced my snacking of you know, hot dogs and corn dogs. I grew up kind of poor. So 
government cheese and hot mm. dogs and mm -hmm. burritos and you know microwave food was kind of my thing and she taught me how to prepare a meal mm. and plan ahead and to enjoy the little things and to put put my food on a littler plate and you know just all these little things and I've gotten to the point in my life where I've, I've let her put the food on my plate because when I do it I put two times as much and because I'm a poor kid I always eat everything on my plate mm. it's kind of always how I've been so now I just eat less because she helps me with that mm -hmm. I'm not perfect in any of these things but I've noticed the more I surrender to her disciplines that she has in her fitness the better I am mm. well recently she's for about five or six years she's wanted a bike for her birthday a road bike mm. and I always say Carly um, that's kind of what I do like I want to buy you the thing that you want we can plan for it I don't care how much it costs let's do that for you um, I challenge accepted mm. Man, look at this Chris I don't know what to do I wonder <laughs> if my house is on fire um, so finally I went down and we got our bike and and then I realized my wife doesn't really ride bikes unless she rides them with someone else mm. And we were down at the bike shop one day and I was getting her some accessories and I noticed they had a used bike and I could tell my wife was like, Hey, fat kid, buy that bike and ride with me. And I was like, okay. So my dog's literally laying on my feet. I love it. So I, I bought this used bike and we've been riding. Well, now we've been riding up a lot. Hmm. And we've been riding like, you know, 20 to 50 miles a week. Wow. Really being in it. And on Saturday, we're going to ride 208 miles together over two days. Wow. We're going to ride from Seattle all the way to Portland. Hmm. I've never done an endurance race before, ever. I don't like those kind of races. I've done endurance things in my head. Yeah, but yeah. I've never put my body to the test. Because wow. remember, I, I like being fit like the rest of you, like everybody else does. Hmm. I've just never been willing to exchange the sacrifice required to maintain being fit. Hmm. So what I do is I do extreme dieting. So every year for about four or five months, I will spend that time correcting the last chunk of those. Right, right. Years. Yep. And so I always waver between about 200 and 225. Mm -hmm. I belong right around the 200 or less mark, mm -hmm. 195. That's where my body would be the best. Mm -hmm. But I kind of go up to the 20s and then climb myself down. It's always two times harder to get skinnier than to maintain. Mm -hmm. But I've always done that. So for the last couple of years, I've gotten mm -hmm. better at maintaining longer and doing better. But I still fat kid. I still have this thing in my life where I got to stop and be, get something out of a gas station. It's a thing. Hmm. Well, this bike hmm. has given me purpose hmm. because I have a race and the race has given me pace because hmm. now when I eat something, I can feel it the next day when I ride hmm. because I'm riding for long enough that my body actually needs good food. Hmm. And then it gives me clarity on what to do and what not to do and how to, you know, if you want to ride a bike 50 miles, it takes four and a half hours or four hours or three hours, right? Depending on the hill and where you're going. Yeah. So you have to, you have to prioritize these kind of things. Right. So I've been waking up at like five o'clock in the morning and going riding with my wife at six o'clock in the morning so that we can get in the hours and still be parents and still be workers. Mm -hmm. And then I've had to humble myself several times to the idea that I, I have to ride this race on this weekend and <laughs> there's a deadline and I have to do it. And mm -hmm. so I've been acting accordingly because I have a goal. Mm. And I wonder if you couldn't take this test and if it couldn't give you the clarity that I've gotten and the gift that I've gotten on having a race, surrendering to my wife, mm -hmm. allowing her wisdom and her discipline and her consistency to be my own. Mm -hmm. So for the last year, her and I have been going to CrossFit three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 a.m. She started and then I joined in. And I had to come to a place in my life when I was going to let my wife wake me up and tell me to get my butt out of bed and go. And I gave her permission to do that. And then um, over time, I started waking her up sometimes. And sometimes when she doesn't want to go, I encourage her to go. So now we're starting to bring out the best in each other. Mm. And now I'm, I feel more healthy than I've ever been. I don't know that I'm like rock hard abs, but I, the other day we did a workout and I had lots of gas in me. I kicked everybody's butt and still had some in me. Mm. And I was like, whoa, this feels kind of good because I knew I had it in me, but I never was willing to do the work to get there. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. willing to exchange the time and the hard work to get to that result. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not saying I'm going to be Mr. You know, Mr. Olympia and walk around. Limp, is that the right word? Mr. Mr. Buff guy. My calves, I mean, yeah. I don't have to work very hard for those. <laughs> right. Um, but if you're listening to this, maybe you take my biker story, my biking story with my wife, and you say to yourself, who in my life is really good at finances and how can I 
how can I join in with them on their disciplines and learn from them and use their mm -hmm. courage and their um, humility to become make them my own? And how can I pick a person in each of these seven pillars or a family or a group or an organization, something that gives me a trajectory to plug into so that I can become the best version of myself in that area? Mm. What I want to do with the cadre concept is I want to create the cadre. The cadre is actually a small group of people working together. It's not a huge group. So I want to be a catalyst for people to create small groups mm -hmm. around these different seven pillars with the idea that we're, we're trying to create it all, but our specialty is finances and our specialty is health. And I want people, I want to have a person from my community that represents my mentor in each of these areas that is really good at that. Yeah. And I want to join their cadre and, and do it their way because they're good at it. Yeah. And then I want them to join mine so I can be good at what I'm good at and I can help them. And I think that it sounds like a really beautiful thing when I picture it from a 30,000 foot view because it's people working together with humility and courage mm. to be the best version of themselves. It's not competing against, but competing with. Yeah. It's not putting down, but lifting up. It's not um, measuring and falling short. It's lifting and, and elevating others around you. There's a thing about it. And I think it can be done. And I think it's needed in our world where we don't have a lot of real connection mm. because we're not, we're, we're, we're walking on eggshells worried about offending everybody around us instead of learning about, you know, people best are attracted to people who are authentic in their own right mm. that aren't trying to take from mm -hmm. any one person. It's a give and a take that they, they have the balance of, have you ever seen the, the quadrant where it says like, are you passive? Are you passive aggressive? Are you, you know, yeah. Everybody wants to be the block that says assertive, whether or not the negative oh, uh, is the yeah, best right, version. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, I think the way you become that is you got to give something and you got to get something from every environment you're in. Mm. So you can't just go and say, man, I don't want to go to that small group because I don't get anything out of it. The first mm. question should be, I need to give to it for a season so that it has the abundance to give back to me. Right. Adam. Yeah. Take the assessment join my community let me, let me do life with you that's i mean that ultimately that's the that's the um that's where it starts i think people people that listen to this more than once right which is that's the beginning of the tribe are people who value the relationship they value what you have to say and i think part of that is um where how you take that relationship to the next level is you take the assessment because that's that's the common language now we now we have seven pillars that we can talk about because that's where this gets depth that's where the change happens is where we take seven pillars on in our lives together that's how we get to borrow courage from one another because i've taken on the seven areas of my life borrow you've courage. taken it on your life that's, that's yeah. good i like that chris borrow courage yeah. yeah so there you go guys go to uh, cadreconcept.com take the assessment um and uh yeah that's that's what there is to do next right shane all right buddy hey it's an honor doing this with you thanks for letting good me stuff. meander thanks for championing this conversation in the world i think this is an important message all right buddy see, see you next time